Now then, my name is Ryan Central and today I have a little bit more information on how Borderlands' endgame is going to look as well as post-launch content. This came from an interview with Chris Brock who is one of the lead developers slash producers on Borderlands 3 and I got to sit down with him last week. First things first, I wanted to talk about how Borderlands was planning to change along with the looter shooter genre. It's been a while since we saw a Borderlands game and in that time we've had Destiny, Anthem, Division, all of these games focusing on that constant updating always online game as a service type are we expecting something similar with this new version of Borderlands? So it's interesting because like we, we've definitely looked at those games and we definitely want to understand what people like about them what people don't like about them uh, we play those games like you know like we got a lot of Destiny fans we had a lot of Division fans right 2012 was a long time ago like the last time we had like a numbered Borderlands uh, was 2012 and so what it means to be a shooter in 2019 versus 2012 is like people expect you to move more effectively, right? People expect you um, to have weapons that like feel very visceral and impactful and stuff like that. So I think we've we've seen that. Um, Borderlands one and to an extent two were lucky to come out during an era where end game was not as uh, critical, right? And I, you know we've looked at some of those games and like okay, well clearly end game is is a thing we need to worry about, right? It's a thing that we need to like you know. We know people will come play the game. Um, so one of the things that we've looked around the kind of the landscape and, and not changed is we're like, okay, well, we still really like our loot formula. Like it's still really important to us that like, okay, we, we, we killed this guy, he dropped a gun. I can go look at that gun, I can see where that is, I can pick it up and I can equip it and use it right now, right? We don't want to change that for anything. Um, we like our narrative structure, like we like our mission structure, uh, but there are, so like there are things that we look around like, okay, well this is what we are, that's what they are. It's not a zero sum game, like you can like both games, right? Like, so we, we don't want to just conform to that. We want to be what Borderlands is. But yeah, it, 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 so split screen's a big deal to us, right? You know, four player cops a big deal to us. Four distinct vault hunters is a big deal to us, right? Like there are things that, about the franchise that are like kind of part of its DNA and you don't want to get away from that. But at the same time, we would be insane to not look around and be like, okay, well, Times are different, expectations are different, and uh, we need to accommodate that. Seeing as Chris mentioned Endgame, I thought I'd put that bear a little bit. I can't get super in depth, but I can say that there are there are multiple kind of axes that you can kind of you know, play Endgame on, right? Like there is kind of the classic, I would like to go do like New Game Plus, Playthrough 2, right? Like th that's, that is definitely a thing. But we also know that there are, are people that want to be able to grind. They just want to go grind the loot. They want to go like, you know, like we, we've all played Diablo. Like we like to run rifts too, right? You know, so it's like, I, we know that we want there to be kind of a light context, uh, easily repeatable, like escalating difficulty kind of thing. We, we know that's a thing we want. Just understanding that there's different kinds of people, the end game means different things to, right? And then making sure that at launch we have something that we're happy with, and then making sure that like post launch we continue to add and add to that, so that you know no one can say we're not paying attention to them. So you mean like rifts in like Diablo, that kind of sure uh, something of that caliber. I mean, I don't I, I don't want to compare it directly to that because it's not exactly that, and I can't get into too many specifics still. But like the idea that like hey, you know what I really want to do right now? I don't really want to do a mission. I don't really want to do a story. What I really want to do is go fight some guys and get some loot. Like, that is a really powerful thing, and we've seen that. Like, we understand that. So I was really excited to hear the Greater Rift kind of content. It sounds super interesting, and to be honest, I think it would suit Borderlands really well. Hard modes have always been a popular sort of game mode in various different games, so it'd be nice for Gearbox to make a grind mode that is similar to what a Greater Rift would be. I mean, in previous Borderlands games, we've had those in an arena fight multiple rounds in the past, so maybe it's something like that with a difficulty modifier, or just a big zone that you can run around to make sure to kill everybody in. I think that'd be a really cool thing to add. Next up, when we had the game test, we played Pandora very early game in the game test, and in the story, you move on to Promethea afterwards. I asked if in any part of the campaign or in the end game would we actually return to Pandora either to do repeatable missions or other end game kind of content. So as far as like repeatable missions and stuff? Um, so we've had some stuff that we're going to talk about soon. Uh, we have, uh, I think Gamescom we're going to talk about some stuff specifically that uh, fits very neatly into what you're describing. Uh, we have missions that are runnable. 
um, it was important to us to make sure that our bosses are runnable. Like we want, we do want people to be able to go replay the sections of content they like, but we do not have like like we don't have like full like replay this mission anytime you want. We don't we don't have that with every mission. There are missions that do allow you to do that, and within the context you will find them that will make sense. Uh, but uh, not every mission you can just like rerun and rerun. But we've tried to make sure that there is content that you can rerun and rerun. Mm -hmm. So. There's a lot of new stuff coming in the new Borderlands game. All sorts of different changes and all sorts of big news that we've already got so far. I wanted to ask Chris, what was an area that he felt wasn't highlighted enough that he really wanted to drill down and say, this is a really cool thing that we added? Level sync is one of these features we kind of talk about and it almost gets kind of passed over. It's not necessarily like the sexiest, like back of the box marketing feature, but um, the most common thing we hear from players is like, hey, I had a group and they outleveled me, and now I can't play with them anymore, and I'm I'm lost. And I, they went. They, they, either they can wait, or I can abandon my job and try to catch up. But like, you know, we're out of sync now, right? And being able to have that not be the case, like we can make that work. Like we can do that math for you, so that like you're level twenty, I'm level thirty. To you, everything feels like level 20. To me, everything feels like level 30. We both feel very effective. Like we don't, it doesn't feel like I'm breaking the game. It doesn't feel like you're holding me back, right? Like that's a pretty big deal. Like that's one of those things that I almost think that we're underselling because it's like, that's like, that was one of our single biggest problems with Borderlands. So like, it's like, cool, we fixed that, so. Are there certain limitations to that, I assume, where the lower level person who would be most likely farther early into the story wouldn't be thrown into like mid-story missions and stuff or? So it depends on, it depends on who's the host, right? So if, if I'm level 30 and I'm hosting the game and you're level one and join me, you can do that. You can join me at whatever part of the story that I'm at, right? When you go back to your game, you will start at the beginning. You'll go through, and then when you get to the point, the part that you already played with me, you'll be offered the option to either skip that because you've already played it, or you can continue to play it again because you know, you want to play your story continuously, right? Mm -hmm. We try to give you that option. With Chris mentioned before that in the end of the campaign, you could do new game plus or do other stuff. I wanted to ask, going off previous Borderlands games, we'll probably finish the main campaign around level 30 to 35. I wondered with this new end game mode or whatever it is, the Great Rift kind of mode, whether you can level to 50 just doing that. Yeah, so um, I mentioned earlier that like we, we do want to have different kinds of end game that speak to different kinds of people, right? So if I never want to do a second playthrough, I still want to be able to level up to 50. So I will be allowed to do that. Borderlands has always had a pretty well-defined way of doing post-launch content. DLCs are a firm example of that. In the time between Borderlands 2 and now, we've had all sorts of games, not even in the looter shooter genre, Overwatch, Fortnite, basing their success of constantly updating a game to keep people interested. I wondered if Borderlands 3 was going to be doing a similar thing there. So far as post-launch content goes, we're still going to do some of the stuff Gearbox is known for, which is like large expansion content that is very worth the value, right? Like Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep was $10, mm -hmm. right? Like, you know, that's longer than a lot of games, right? You know, so like we still want to do that kind of thing. Also, we know that for your game to like thrive in this day and age, that you've got to continuously engage the community with also free things, right? Like you don't necessarily, like we want the game to evolve and change and kind of feel like it's alive. But we also don't want to become a games of a games as a service game for Borderlands. We don't want to do that for Borderlands because we, we want Borderlands to still be Borderlands. So yeah. it's trying to kind of hit that balance. Next, I wanted to talk about raid bosses or just general bosses in the game of Borderlands. We've had raid bosses in Borderlands 2 as an example and with games like Destiny really basing their end game around raid mechanics like that, I wondered if Borderlands 3 might be doing a similar thing there or not. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm actually really, really proud of where the bosses have gotten to in the game. Um, uh, our lead boss designer is a guy named Matt Cox and he's really helped us out here tremendously. I, um, I think this is gonna this is gonna sound weird. Like shooters are not the best genre for boss fights, right? Like there's there's not as much you can do with uh, since you don't have full like kind of environmental awareness. You can see this this FOV in front of you, right? Mm -hmm. Because of that, I mean, it's easy for bosses to turn into like I'm gonna shoot this boss a lot. These big bullet sinks, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'm really happy 
with how much of a strength boss fights have been for us. Like, I think we do boss fights very, very well. Um, and yeah, like you said, there's a lot of them. It goes from, and there's everything from like uh, a badass with a name, right? You know, like just kind of a little boss all the way up to like giant, I, I don't even want to hit because yeah. there's things that are just enormous that you're going to fight, so. I mentioned Destiny, and with Chris saying that shooters don't really have good raid mechanics, I brought up the exception of Destiny with standing on certain platforms, doing certain bits and pieces. I wondered if we're going to see that in Borderlands 3. Uh, I mean, we definitely have looked at that stuff and, and seen what they've done. Um, for the core game, uh, there's... It, it's, it's tricky because you definitely want to have... You want to have content that you can do by yourself and content you can do with other people. So if you have a boss where the mechanic is like, cool, three of us are going to stand over here on these very specific spots or we're going to like bounce aggro back and forth. Like, that stuff's awesome, but it doesn't work when you're a solo player, right? And, you know, making every boss have like kind of a solo mode and a not solo mode is, is a pretty massive undertaking, right? So uh, insofar as like super deep boss mechanics go, uh, like raid style, mm, not so much. Though, I mean, there's always room in the future to do lots of stuff like that, mm -hmm. so. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I tend to play multiplayer games like Borderlands, like Destiny, even Anthem and The Division solo, for the most part, at least. I will match make into certain content, so I wondered what life would be like as a player that tends to play solo in a multiplayer game. So, uh, I mean, if you want to play the whole game solo, that's definitely a thing you can do. Um, but we've tried to make matchmaking as like frictionless as possible. Like you can go to the pause screen and just matchmake with your friends. You can do that from a zone transition, right? Like if you go up to a, one of the zone lines, you can basically hit uh, Y or triangle and it will show you like your friends that are in that zone. You can just join them from there, right? Uh, just trying to make sure that uh, that stuff is just as easy as possible. We've also done a lot with um, We've noticed that people are not talking on headsets as much as they used to, right? So trying to make sure that people can, uh, can non-verbally communicate like better. System. So we have a ping system, uh, we have an emote system, so that you can just, uh, you can do like a rudimentary communication and get the gist. Like I can go ping a, a, a red chest and like, cool, you see that too. We'll go through get some loot. I can, uh, I can ping that badass. Cool, he's highlighted for you. Now we can both focus fire on that guy, right? So. Uh, trying to just make all that stuff just a little bit easier than it's ever been, so. And they are all the questions about the general specifics of the game, end game, post-launch content, boss battles, all those really interesting parts of the game that we don't have an awful lot of information on at the moment. Hope you enjoyed this interview, this breakdown by Chris. Hopefully you learned something and are excited to Gamescom, where it's looking that we might find out some more information about some of this stuff at least. Thanks for watching, do subscribe if you'd like more Borderlands content, and see you soon. Take care.